Hi everyone, I'm Hassan Bal Surya, and this is the demonstration of the simulation project I developed in order to understand the spread of COVID-19 virus inside a factory premise. Let me introduce you to the model. This model is developed in order to simulate the spread of COVID-19 virus in a fictional small-scale factory as a part of understanding supply chain disruption in a supply chain network. In my research, I am trying to understand the supply chain disruption in depth, which is caused due to the COVID-19 pandemic situation. So production is one of the major nodes in a supply chain network. So if the production will, is disrupted, then that disruption will propagate to the other nodes of the supply chain network as well. Therefore, it is essential to identify any of such COVID-19 cases inside the factory in order to avoid spreading of this disease among the factory employees or factory workers to continue a smooth flow of production even during this sort of a disruption. So this factory, which I have considered in this model, is completely isolated from the external world as an assumption in order to avoid factors affecting externally to the model. And the workers are following a random social behavioral pattern inside the factory. And there will be 100 employees in total inside the factory all times. The model is based on four control parameters in order to simulate the behavior. Those are initial infected workers, diagnosing rate, face masks, and the vaccination rate. So let me explain you the control parameters in depth. The observer has the ability to input a number of initial infected workers to the factory. So then the, when an observer input a number as an initial infected workers, you could observe a difference of the behavior inside the in, uh, factory when it comes to infection rates, when it comes to diagnosing rates, et cetera. The second control parameter is the diagnosing rate. The diagnosing rate means the rate of identifying an infected worker inside the factory. So this is another control parameter, which you has the ability of setting it to maximum, which is 100%, high, which is 90%, medium, which would be 50%, low would be 10%, zero is the last percentage. These percentages will later be used in further calculations of this model. Vaccination rate means the rate of vaccinating normal people to become immune. In this model, only the normal people can be vaccinated in order to go into the stage of immunity. Face mask is another factor used and this ensures whether uh, the infection probability is reduced or increased according to wearing face masks and not wearing face masks. Let me explain you the model diagram. So there are initially normal people and infected people inside the factory. The initial stage at the day zero of the model, there will be set of infected people as you input to the system. And there will be uh, the rest of the employees or the workers who are normal. So these normal employees, they will be coming back to infected stage according to the infection probability set in the um, model, which is coded for this particular system. So the infection probability will decide what percentage of normal people will go back, go to infected stage. When an employee reach the infected stage, there will be three stages to proceed. One is the stage of hospitalizing, it is defined by the diagnosing efficiency you set as a parameter in this system. If not, they could either die or remain infected. A person who's hospitalized has a chance of recovering, which is 70%. Rest of the 30% can remain hospitalized or some of them, which is 1.9%, will eventually be dying. 
This 1.9 of death rate means the usual death rate recorded within Sri Lanka uh, from the COVID-19 cases reported. And what happens to normal people if they get vaccinated? They come into a stage of immunity. So when this immunity stage reaches more than 90%, the model will come into termination. Let me explain you some calculations. The transition rate in, of infected people going back to normal, that is the recovery chance of the infected workers, is computed according to the diagnosing efficiency that you input to the system. If an infected worker is neither diagnosed nor died, he or she has the chance of 20% recovery. Let me explain you one part of this. If you set the diagnosing rate to be high, that means 90% of your infected employees will be recognized. So those 90% um, will be hospitalized eventually. The rest of the 10%, out of that 10%, 20%, that means 1.96% will go back to normal stage. Uh, then 6.1% of that particular 10% will stay infected and 1.9% of that particular remaining 10% will be dying. And the face mask is a Boolean variable. Without wearing the face mask, the infection probability is equal to 97%. And by wearing the face mask, the, the infection probability will be reduced by 60%. So now let me take you to the model demonstration. This is the interface of the model that I have developed where you can see model parameters, control parameters here, and the evaluation uh, parameters in this segment of the interface. So initially, uh, I have uh, entered an initial uh, infected employee count of 10 to the system, and I will be choosing max uh, medium as the diagnosing rate, which is 50%. And for the time being, I will not uh, let the employees wear fa face masks. And the vaccination rate, I will set to 10%. And I will set up the system. So when this system is set up, you can see infected people in red. And when I uh, hit the go button, you can see infected people bumping into normal people and infecting others as well. And some of them is diagnosed. That is why the red circle is being drawn on them. And some of them in the meantime is getting vaccinated and becoming immune, which are demonstrated by green. So you can see in the controlling, uh, in the uh, evaluation parameters, infected percentage is shown. And then hospitalized percentage is also mentioned eventually because being hospitalized is one of the options for an infected worker. Let me increase the speed a little bit. So you can see then later, um, when the system reaches more than 90% of immunity and no cases of infected workers and no cases of hospitalized workers, the system come into termination. So all the time there will be 100 workers in the system Whenever a person dies in this particular simulation run, there are no deaths. So let me uh, set up it again and run the uh, simulation for you. And uh, if any deaths were recorded, in order to remain constant as a system, a normal worker will be introduced to the system for the count of victims uh, to make sure that all times there will be 100 employees in the system. So you can see in the graph how the immune percentage varies within 31 days, the system came into normality, how the immune percentage went up and how the normal people went down because the immune people increased, how the infected people varied for the 31 days and how the isolated people varied. Isolated means the cases who are hospitalized. So this will effectively demonstrate um, this system. Let me change a few parameters for you. I have decreased the amount of initial infected and increased the diagnosing rate. And also I have set the face masks on 
let me set up the system and let me run it for you. You would see the system will coming back to normality very fast and uh, within less than 30 days later. So this is the code of the project that I have developed. As for the improvements of this system, anybody can improve the system by introducing contact tracing into this, where you can trace the contacts of infected people bumping into normal people and exposing them to this risk of COVID-19. And after uh, tracing those uh, contacts, they can put into uh, the respective stages of hospitalizing or either quarantine, quarantining as well. If not, also we can add the links option to this and in, uh, increase the clarity of this by making team-based structure of this uh, system and making them link to teams. And through that also we can improve contact tracing. So these stages could be identified as further developments of my project. And that is the end of my presentation. Thank you very much.